All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to get your PS4 controller hooked up and recognized and running on your Windows PC using the software Input Mapper, and I'm going to be using version 1.7, although it looks like this version hasn't been updated in, since, like, May 27th, 2020, so this might be a little out of date, but we'll just see what happens. So to download this, you just gotta go find it. So I just put in like input mapper. And then here you can just see it's the first result at the top, beta.inputmapper.com. Then we'll go to downloads. And then from here, it gives you the option of installing input mapper 1.6, which, Why was 1.6 posted on March 3rd, 2021, and the newer version was posted on November 5th, 2019? I'm not going to question. Uh, we're just going to grab Input Mapper 1.7. You can also find the HID Report Listener if you need that for whatever reason on this page. And then I'll just tell it to download now. I've already got it downloaded in my tutorial files. Actually, I'll just tell it to overwrite it. Why not? And then we can just pop that open. And here you can see where we can install it. Now, before I do that, I know for a fact that my controller... So while it's downloading a second copy, I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to double-click on the icon. I'm just going to double-click on the icon to start the installation process. It should pop open. A setup wizard. The nice thing about Input Mapper compared with some of the other tools like DS4 Windows is that it actually, in one package, installs all the things that you need in order to run it by just selecting the typical installation, which installs most of the features. If you think that you don't have something or something's breaking and you need to install like more stuff to make sure, do the complete install. But for most of us, the regular Typical install is probably fine. I'm going to just let it install to wherever it wants to be. And then I'm only going to let it install a shortcut in my start menu folder. I'm going to click install. And so this will install things like these all use the Vigim bus driver created by someone else to map buttons to things. In this case, the PS4 controller is going to be mapped to the layout of the Xbox 360 controller because Functionally, besides the fact that the PS4 controller has a touchpad and the Xbox just has the two center buttons, they are basically the same controller. They all have the same physical buttons, triggers, and knobs. So that's just how it works. And then here as it's starting to install, it says that a more recent version of the Vigim Bus driver is already installed on your computer. If that pops up, it's not a big deal. In my case, I use DS4 Windows and installed a more recent version, so it, it's not going to overwrite the better version of it. And then it should, it should finish relatively quickly. It's only been like a minute or two. There's not a lot of stuff that goes into the software. It's literally just mapping one controller's buttons to a 360 controller. Okay, so once it's all done, You'll see a page like this that's saying, we're all done. You can launch it or you can just finish. And there's also a button to donate to the project. If you do like using the software and you end up using it a lot, I fully recommend jumping in and giving them a couple of bucks. But uh, if not, don't worry about it. And then I'm going to click on to launch Input Mapper 1.7 and click on the Finish button. So this should bring up a window that looks like this. And by default right now, all you're going to see is the keyboard and mouse being plugged in because I deleted my PS4 controller from my Bluetooth settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to hook this up via Bluetooth because people like using these wirelessly. So if you go to your Windows 10 settings and you go to Bluetooth and other devices, you can go up here to the top and there's a button to add Bluetooth or other device. Now, at the same time, with your PS4 controller in your hand, press the PlayStation button, that's the one with the logo on it, and the share button at the exact same time. 
And then eventually the little light on the back should start to flash really brightly like a strobe light. Then you can click on add Bluetooth or other device. Go to Bluetooth. And then it should pop up somewhere right here. Input wireless controller. Done. And then it should be at the bottom of your little list down here. And then let's... It's already set up, which I didn't want it to do. But basically a pop-up should show up on your, on your uh, input mapper. And you want to create a new controller with it. And you want it to output a 360 controller. Because the only way that a PlayStation controller can function this way is by doing that. So, like, if we do this, I can probably fake it. Let's go here and we'll say, let's create a new settings profile. And it'll pop open this window and you can call this whatever you want. We'll just say, I want to call this my cool controller. And then next. You want this to be mapped to a 360 controller, otherwise your computer won't know what to do with it. Because if Microsoft had support for PS4 controllers or the video games had support for PS4 controllers already, you wouldn't need this. So you need to have this fake that it's a 360 controller. And I know what people will say, but Larry, it's going to show me Xbox buttons. Yeah, it's gonna, because that's the only ones that the game can show you. For most of the games. It sucks, but if you really have a hard time with it, print out a picture of a Xbox 360 controller so you can remember which button is which. Um, other than that, out of the box, once you set up the controller and tell it to map to a 360 controller, it'll show that you've got like two controllers plugged in, but you actually only have one. It's just your PS4 controller and then the Xbox 360 controller it's pretending to be and then you should be good to go. From here, if you really needed to, you could go into your profiles, and then you could edit these, and you can click on these buttons to rebind them to do just about anything you want, based upon either a key binding on the computer, like the keyboard or the mouse, or one of the ones on the 360 gamepad. And then you can save it. Not, not terribly crazy. But for the most part, out of the box, just making it map to a default 360 controller, should be good for most people, and then you can go out and go to the races and play different games. Another note for everyone out there, that if you get this running, don't run DS4 Windows or another keybinding program at the same time, because they conflict with each other a lot, and one of them will break. And then stuff won't work, and you'll get feisty. And this does have to stay open in the background, so just, like, minimize it in order for this to function as your controller driver. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and, sub and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.